If you are currently using Corvid by Wix, then you probably already figured out that there is no code to detect scrolling. So it makes you wonder how you could possibly code any functions that are controlled from a scrolling action. One reason why developers would like to detect scrolling is to progressively load content on page scroll. This means that the content will auto load as soon as the person starts scrolling. Most people don't like the buttons that say load more. They prefer that their users avoid clicking extra buttons like load more or pagination numbers so that way they can scroll through the content. Infinite scrolling is very popular. I'm Code Queen Ayali, and I'm going to show you how to make this totally codable. If you're watching this tutorial on YouTube, please click on the video description and find the link to the tutorial site. I'm on the homepage and I'm going to show you what I built. All I did was connect the repeater to a data set and added a tiny bit of code. Now keep an eye on the very bottom of my page. As I scroll down, you're going to see a small loading GIF as it loads more content. Ready? Did you see that? I only have nine items. Let me refresh the page once again. Keep an eye at the bottom of the page. Here we go. Did you see it now? Pause the video, go back just a little bit so you can see it. Or wait just one more second while I get into the editor and I'll show you what it looks like. This is the home page. I have a simple repeater connected to a data set. And on the very bottom, I have a strip that has a GIF. I'm going to show you exactly how I created this. And probably in under five minutes, you can have one just like this. Now I've already duplicated a page. So I'm going to go to my site menu and go to a copy of the home page. Of course, it's missing some elements now because I want to walk you through the steps so you can get it working exactly the same way. First, I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to go to Lists and Grids. You can drag and drop any of these repeaters. I'm going to use the top one. But this time I'm not going to change the design. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to drag it and drop it to make sure it attaches to my strip. Because my page is built on different strips. I'm going to take the bottom of the strip, stretch it all the way up to the top. You will click on the plus sign and you're going to scroll down and look for the word content manager. If you don't see the word content manager, then you'll probably see the word database. Wix recently updated their editor. From here, you're going to look through the different options and find the one that says data set. Click on the plus sign to add a data set to the page. The example that we are using is by connecting it to a Wix stores. You can use this tutorial method on any database that you've created yourself, or you can use this method on any database collection that Wix automatically generates for you. For example, if I go down to the bottom, if I open up the site structure panel using the arrow at the very bottom corner, I'll be able to see under database all the different databases that I have access to based on the Wix apps that I've installed on this site. I can see that I'm connected to stores, so I'm able to connect to these database collections. I'm also connected to members and marketing. So I'm going to be working on the Wix stores database. Back to the data set, I'm going to click on the settings. From connect a collection, I'm going to look for stores and then go down to products. From here, it'll auto select read only which is fine. We only want to read. For the number of items to display, this is the number limit for the items that will auto load when your page is ready. I'm going to change that to 3 instead of 20. I can click out of there, click on the X, and the data set is configured. Now I'm going to click on the repeater, click on the database icon, 
choose a data set. There's my stores data set. And I can connect most of the items from here. I'm going to click on the image. Image will be connected to the main media. Alt text, I will connect it to the name. Tooltip, I will connect it to the name. And the links to will be connected to the product page URL. If I scroll back up, go back to all connections, I can connect the next item. I'm going to connect this to the name and scroll down the list and connect each one. I am going to connect the button. And I want to connect it also to the product page URL. I'm not done yet. I still need to build the bottom part. So remember, we built this on a strip. But if you see here, there's another strip underneath. Try to avoid moving your page manually. Do not adjust the height. Let the page auto adjust so that way there are no gaps on the page. On the plus sign, we're going to go down to strip, classic, and click on one. I'm going to move this strip up and move the other strip down. Notice that I am not manually adjusting the height of the page. It is auto adjusting just by using these drag handles to push the elements up or down. I'm going to push this one all the way up and I'm going to change the background to zero opacity. From here, I'm going to go into my media, image, my uploads, and I can select a GIF. Now you don't have to have the GIF, but that simulates the feeling that something is loading on the page. So I definitely do recommend you use some type of GIF. And there's a lot of free ones online. I'll have a link to my totally codable page. So that way you can browse through the resources and try to find free GIFs. For now, I'm going to select this red one. I'm going to add it to the page. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to attach it to the strip. I'm going to open up the properties panel so you can right click, select view properties. And then when the properties panel opens for this GIF, I'm going to click hidden on load. I can change the name loading GIF. And for this strip, I will change the name as well to loading strip. From here with the properties panel open, I'm going to turn on the on viewport enter. Enter. <laughs> this means as soon as this strip comes into view on the page, I want the code to do something. So let me get a copy of my code from the home page. And let me paste it on that other page. Inside of the export function that got auto generated when you clicked on viewport enter, I pasted the code. I will drop a link in the tutorial description so you can copy and paste the code from my tutorial site. We're going to change the code just a little bit. The loading GIF, I'm going to add it on the first line of the code. For the data set, just make sure that your data set name matches what is on your page. And then for the third line, you're also going to put the name of your GIF. Now, if you notice, I am typing in a few letters and Wix is suggesting a couple of matches on the page. If you click on one of those, it'll autocomplete the code for you. And that's it. This is all the code that you need to make that lazy loading effect. Let's go ahead and save it and preview. There we go. Did you see it load that time? Amazing, right? Just a tiny bit of code and a very fancy design that hopefully you can use on your website. Remember, if you have any questions, please look us up on Facebook. We are the totally codable largest Corvid code group on Facebook. You can also visit totallycodable.com for other pieces of codes and other tutorials. Or if you still can't find your answers, I am available for private tutoring. Follow this booking link on the tutorial site and it'll take you to my website to book a session with me. I'm Code Queen Ayeli and this was another totally codable moment.